As the old saying goes, time and tide wait for no man, and we are living proof. By the year 2030, more than 20% of Americans will be seniors. And while many of us will want to stay home and keep our independence, it's not always that easy. That's why, as Christina Quinn shows us, some local researchers are working on a solution. On the fourth floor of Richards Hall on Northeastern University's campus in Boston, Christine Gordon gives me a tour of the lab she manages. So welcome to NU Home, or New Home. Uh, this is our laboratory at Northeastern University. It is illustrative of what an older, independently living adult might be living in. Fully equipped with devices, cameras, and sensors, this smart home is designed to monitor your movements and remind you when to take your meds, coach you through workouts, and even track how often you're brushing and flossing. The big picture is to allow people to age in place or to rehabilitate in place because we know that the health outcomes for individuals who are in the home are generally better than those that are institutionalized. And as the population of seniors doubles over the next 30 years, the number of caregivers will take a nosedive, opening up the demand for virtual caregiving. While a lot of technology they use already exists, the new home team is developing its own devices. This is a prototype of a smart cane. It's not the prettiest thing, but it does measure balance and gait speed. So just by using something as simple as a cane, we're able to learn a lot about not just their habits and where they might be in the home, but also the status of their health. The new home team is also working on ways to send information from devices like this to a family member or alert your physician's office when necessary. Holly Jimison, co-creator of New Home, envisions doctors will prescribe patients with devices and plants tailored to their individual needs and conditions. In the same way they would go get a prescription filled at the drugstore, these kits could be available with the right modules inside, all the sensors required. But these devices are not cheap. Some would even argue they're a luxury. Even so, Lori Orlov, founder of Aging in Place Technology Watch, says insurers might be willing to foot the bill. It's always feasible to have something medically reimbursed if it in, in fact provides a value that reduces the likelihood, for example, of a person being readmitted to the hospital. The other interesting uh, aspect of this is the need for commercializing technology. Um, I believe that research projects that create prototypes that are useful for an older adult market need to simultaneously find partners who will bring them into commercial reality. For Holly Jimison, the ultimate goal is integrating all these technologies and using that information to better inform physicians and caretakers. I think much of it is here and now, but it's not coordinated. You know, people will have an app for this, an app for that, and nothing is pulled together and integrated into your daily lives. And if integrating these sensors and devices means living independently longer, aging in place just might become a little easier. <laughs> Christina joins me now. Hey there, Christina. Hi, Jim. Can we start with that cane thing there? Yeah, it's cool, isn't How it? How close is that from moving to lab to market to somebody's hand? It's just a prototype. I don't think they're that serious about it right now. They're really focusing on software to integrate all these technologies. So they've partnered up with a couple of software companies and are just to see where it goes. Okay, let's move to something that is on the market. Echo, for example. Yes. How... Who trains an 80-year-old hmm. that has no technical skills to do use something that uh, would be really valuable, right. I think? Who does that? It's usually a family member. The vast majority of these, you know, being able to coach, a, coach your, you know, aging parent, is, it's usually the family member, a family member. And, and that works? I mean, you know, just like when your father or mother tries to teach you how to drive, it usually yeah. doesn't go over. I'm yeah. serious about that. No, I think, uh, yes, I think, it, I think a lot of it works. Depending, but there are also, you know... More and more older people are using wearable technology, you know, Fitbits, that type of thing. Oh, that's a good and so, point, yeah. and a lot of them are um, they have smartphones. Let's stay on the technology front. What is mm -hmm. it called? Remote or virtual caregiving technology? Yeah. I assume isn't cheap. Right. And so when this wraparound thing that, that all these different pieces, right. what are we talking about? How are people expected to afford this? Yeah, so there are a few, I mean, there are quite a few on the market right now that do this sort of, th for a consumer, at a consumer level, so if you can afford a few hundred bucks to buy something like this and install it in your home, great. But if you can't, um, like Lori Orla said, it is possible to have medical reimbursement. Massachusetts is one of the only states in the country that doesn't have any sort of telehealth law. 
Um, there are more and more states that have telehealth law and that would enable this kind of reimbursement down the line. So I know that there's a bill that's been proposed, so we'll see where that goes in Massachusetts. But obviously, as, as she said, if it, you stay in your home with this, right. it's a great savings likely for the taxpayer. No? Yeah, in the long run, because if that means fewer hospital visits, right, for, for the individual and also more independence, and it's about being preemptive, right, and preventative in terms of taking care of your health. Yeah. That is exactly right. Christina Kranz, yeah. nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks so much for your time.